Munson with Munson Music, and we're going to talk about how you can play a song called Hideaway. And we ended up cabling this on third fret to kind of match the recording, but walk through a couple things in root position just in case you don't have one. And it starts out with this cool bass line actually for kind of our intro, which later on becomes our bridge, where you got open E, and then third fret on the A, and then open D, and then an open A. So we're kind of following an E note, and then a C note, and then a D note. Later on in the bridge, actually, you'll hear this cool little lick happen around those chords. And if you wanted to follow those notes, you'd have second fret on the D, and then we do that three times, and then open G, second on the D, and then open B. So kind of a two, 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 oh, two, oh, two, 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 oh, two, oh, two, 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 oh, two, oh, two, oh. And if you wanted to, you could even kind of take those parts and put them together. By doing this hybrid picking, I'm kind of using my pick for my basses and my fingers for the other notes to lick. You may want to try it finger style too. But you start out open E with the second fret on the D string and kind of work our lick. And then go to third fret on the A string. And I'm kind of setting up that, that first fret on the D with the first finger. I think that makes the fingering a little bit easier. Because then you go to, to third fret on the A with the second finger. And then fifth fret on the A string for the setting on the D. Wanted to make it a cool little two part to kind of kick it off, and that, that definitely is something you may want to bring back for the bridge. Just kind of digging on that idea, so I thought I'd throw it out there. Or if you're looking for a really easy way to play it, then you could just back that up with chords. And you start on the E minor chord by doing first finger on the A second, second finger on the D string second. And if you strum all those together, that sounds an E minor chord, and it sounds really sad. You may want to cry. Um, or you can put the third finger on the B third, pinky on the high E third kind of work that as an E minor 7 through the tune. And then from the E minor, we can back up that C note with the C major chord by doing first finger on the B first fret, second finger on the D second fret, third finger on the A third fret. And if you show them the A string to the high E string, our beautiful sounds of C major. Now you may also dig on lifting off the first finger and making it a C major 7, or adding in the pinky on the B third for a C major 9, kind of say some things around the C chord. Or another way to play C major 9 is to do first finger on the D second, Second finger on the A third, third finger on the B third, pinky on the high E third. So you kind of dig on that, that makes it, that change a little bit easier for you. And then from the C, we're we'll going to a D major chord. You can normally do this first finger on the G second, second finger on the high E second, third finger on the B third fret. And if you strum the D string to the high E string, that sounds a D major chord and it sounds really happy. And you may also want to dig on lift off the second finger, the dangerous finger to lift, makes it D sus two. Or you could add in the pinky on the high E third for the suspended chord and kind of say some things around the D chord. And then from the D, we go into an A minor chord. I normally do this first finger on the B first fret, second finger on the D second fret, third finger on the G string second fret. And if you strum all those together, that sounds an A minor chord. It sounds really sad. Now around A minors, it's cool to lift the first finger, make that an A suspended second. Or you could add in the pinky on the B third for an A suspended chord, kind of say some things around that chord. Lift the third finger, make it an A minor seven, or you could add in the pinky on the high E third for an A minor seven, or you may dig on an A seven sus, or you could do first finger on the D second, second finger on the G second, third finger on the B third, pinky on the high E third. Kind of working that for your day. Now we could actually kind of leave three and four down that whole time, kind of E minor. I'm doing kind of an eight down count on each of those chords and a little bit of muting just to make that a little bit sneaky. Or a couple other strumming options. Um, one of my favorite strum patterns for a 4 4 like this is down, down, up, up, down, up. So we took E minor and just tried that a lot. You have down, down, down. Um, you could use something called a 16th note strum pattern. And what I mean by that is if you're tapping your foot to the beat, 
right now we're using it. Um, we're kind of dividing that beat into two parts with our down, down, up, up, down. One, two, one, two. And that's called an eighth note. What a sixteenth note is, is where you divide that beat into four parts. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. And one of my favorite sixteenth note strum patterns is a long down, 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 up, up, down, down, up, down. And what I mean by that is if you take the E minor and do it down for four. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. That's what you'd be doing on the first beat. Then on the second beat, you do it down on one, down on three, up on four. So we're going one, two, three, four, down, 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 down. Then on the third beat, you do it up on two, down on three. So we're going one, two, three, four, one, up, down, one, up, down, one, up, down. And then on the last beat, you'd be going down and down right along with the one, two, three, four. So down, 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 down. So all together, chorus idea and we have the open E and then we play open E again and then third foot on the low E and then open A second on the A open A and then back to second on the A change the chords. We kind of start out on the E minor, but then you want to go to the A minor chord. And then I think you could stay on the A minor, or if you want to, you can kind of follow that bass note change to the B note by playing a B minor chord. And normally you do this as a second fret bar, second finger on the B third, third finger on the D fourth, pinky on the G fourth. And if you strum all those together, that sounds a B minor chord and it sounds really sad. And you may also dig on lifting off the pinky, making that a B minor setting. So we're doing first finger on the A second, second finger on the G second, third finger on the high E second, which would be a cool way to work it. Or instead of putting three on the high E, you could put it on the B string third fret, and work that as a B minor 11. Or you could add in the pinky on the high E third, and have a B minor drone voice, which would be cool too. And then from the B minor, we kind of make a change to the D. So on that chorus part, we're kind of taking an E minor for kind of a three down count. An A minor for five, and then D minor for three, and then D for five. So that's a little weird. You could round it off to four, kind of an E minor, A minor, D minor, D, or do three plus five. E minor, A minor, D minor, D, D minor, one, two, three, A, one, two, three, four, five, D minor, two, three, D, one, two, three, four, five. Or if you're digging on the down, down, up, up, down, you could kind of take that just the down down of kind of half the pattern to work on the chords through that part. Or you can kind of split the pattern and do the E minor with the down, down, and then hit the A for the up, up, down, up. Then go to the B minor for the down, down. Those parts. 
parts to read the song. Now the weird part is to play along with, with the keys, I, um, instead of starting on an E minor chord, starting on a G minor chord. So to play along with the recording, what you want to do is take a capo, and you put the capo on third fret, then now your E minor is really a G minor, and your C is really an E flat major, and your D is really an F major, and your A minor is really a C minor chord, and your B minor is really a D minor chord. So take from the very beginning, you may want to kind of kick it off with just that bass line. Open three, open D, open A, or you can completely steal that bridge leg. And that's where that main lick actually kind of comes from. If you're kind of waiting for where does that happen in the recording, uh, you may want to kind of play around with that idea through that part. Or something else that I like to add to a song like this too is bass notes. And a lot of times on that first down of the down, down, up, up, down, up, you throw in a bass for the chord. So on the E minor, you have a low E for the bass. On the C, you have the A for the bass. You could work it as just a bass down up on each of those chords. You want to kind of follow that bass line. Minor bass down, A minor bass, B minor, D, E minor, D, seven subs, B minor, D. Or you could split the pattern with basses and have E minor the bass down, down, up, down, D minor bass down, down, up, D minor bass down, down, up, D minor bass down, down, up. Half it 
So you can work just the bass down and down up on each chord. of how you get strung through hideaway in our case. So good luck.